Thank you so much for sticking to Y254 TV. This is the Power Talk Show and I am Cheryl Blessing. This evening I'm here on set with some lovely ladies. I have Rachel and Natasha with me and we're having a conversation on how we can better help people understand Gen Z's. So we're trying to figure out how are we different and what are some of the differences that we have right now that are actually adding value to our lives. So before we went on our short break, we were having a conversation on uh, this struggle mentality and kujipa raha. Because mm. you know these days Gen Z's are all about, I'll work for three months and then go on vacation yeah. and I need like two weeks off. Mm. But the older generations will just like probably save up, save up, save up, alafu December and you family outing the one end up. How is that different? Because we were just talking about picking the struggle, picking what we're willing to put in the, the work in and suffer for, but it has to have a benefit. Yes. Why do you think we're like that? Why do we think, why does it have to, to have like some, some something? Why does it have to have like a, a gift or a package at the end of the deal? Well, if you think about it, like I d just to bounce off what it is I mentioned about globalization and everything that we see on the internet, we've come to realize that the, the value of time and what it is that you can use to, to uh, make sure that your time is more productive. So why would I break my back doing something like sujuku koroga ugali na jiko ya 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 maweta atu ya kuni I can do the same thing with a gas cooker you know like it doesn't have to be that hard what I can actually accept as being difficult and something that I will put myself through is something I call arrested development where I will put myself in a difficult situation where I know at the end of the day the results will be there but if not why do I have to do it though yeah. <laughs> yeah. You're yeah. like, why? Mm. Period. Because you see a smarter way of doing it. You mm. don't want to, because we talked about working hard versus working smart. Because mm. working hard doesn't necessarily mean it has more benefits. Mm. But working smart guarantees that you get the benefits, mm. you save time, you save energy, and it's more efficient. Mm -hmm. Now when we think about that, do we think we're more innovative because of that? Yes. Have we become more innovative in terms of, like I even saw a video of, we, we were talking about just making chapatis. Yeah. The one on the it was such a big deal. Yeah. Mm. You have to make the perfect shape of chapati. Yeah. I saw someone rolling one out and then a kakatana, like a lead. lead. Yes. Yeah. And, then, yeah. <laughs> and it was like, wow, the creativity, who mm. thought of that? So has it made us more innovative than different generations and why is that? I generally feel like it has made us more in innovative because as much as I say we are not lazy, we are lazy. Kidogo, just, just a little bit, just a little bit, yeah? We are a little bit lazy and the best, if you want to get the best way to do things, give a lazy person a job. They yeah. will find the best fastest way to do that thing that you've given them to do yeah. and i feel like that is basically gen z's because we become more innovative and we become more um you know more aware of how other how we could do things in other ways you know you understand yeah. so basically how how we are put um how are we have been raised and how we have we've have, we have learned to live in this age and time is basically finding the easiest way to do things to do mm -hmm. things and i feel like that is better than what people used to do in the, yeah. in the 90s, in the we're 80s. Saving time. We're, saving we're saving time, energy. energy, and basically we're getting the results, even better results at times. You know? Yeah. 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 And yeah. that's so true, because mm -hmm. I, what you said, the quote, if you want to get a very effective way, a fast way to do things, yeah. give it to a lazy person, because yeah. they'll figure out an yeah, innovative way of doing it. Yeah, the fastest way and the best way to yeah. do it. Yeah. And on that note, when we talk about the 9 to 5, we, we, we just read the statistic that most people do not like the 9 to 5. Mm. They prefer to be more freelance and to, to take charge of their time. Yeah. So how can we, Rachel, because you're in the corporate life, you're in campus, you're in uh, digital creation. So how can someone find the balance? If they prefer the nine to five, because they're people who genuinely love it, mm. how can they find the balance? And if they don't, how can they still make maybe the same or more income doing what they like doing? Okay, let's start with um, the age to five and everybody not liking it, me included. I'm just here for a good time, not a long time. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I think the first thing would be negotiate. 
-hmm. Can you get a few days where you're working from home? And when you're working from home, can you actually work from home and not just chill on your sofa, if you know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah, and it, when you build trust like that with your employer, sometimes you do get some days off and you, and you get an opportunity for you to do that. If your job does not allow you to work from home, okay. Um, like I said, arrested development. Can you wake up a little bit earlier? Damn. I said honey, what I said. Honey. <laughs> I said what I said. Because well, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> because. Because if you think about it, if if this H to five is the one that is going to take you from uh, from not working, then why don't you just wake up a little bit earlier, shoot your videos in the morning, edit them at night and then do a, do your eight to five again because yeah. realistically if you want to get out of the point that you are you have to put in effort to get out of there and, and if you, you don't, don't want, do want yeah. to That's do the true. eight to five it's fine nobody is nobody is like putting a knife on your neck no nobody is doing mm. that you yeah. can opt out you, you can, can do what nosim did and actually just create things from the ground up yeah yeah and be in charge of your yeah. own money and finances and exactly. everything yeah There's a always because i've been to i've been to an eight to five i didn't like it <laughs> oh god i I can't. mean, if we're being oh honest, my. I've encountered so many people when I'm doing an eight to five and they hate their jobs. They genuinely hate being there. It's yeah. like, yeah. you feel like you're in prison. You walk in and everyone is just a slave to the time. They're like, what time is it? It's not getting to five. It's yeah. lunchtime. Let's yeah. go. So it's, it's, it's like they need it, but they don't want it. Mm. And you found a way to break away. And it's also the same with being in Kenya. Because so many people want to fly out. People just want to, to go out of the mm. country, mm -hmm, go mm -hmm, elsewhere. Mm -hmm. Which is a, is a way of breaking free. Yeah. So let's talk about breaking free. Mm -hmm. Right after I read some of these comments. And this is from Facebook. We have Don Dada who says, Well represented Kama Kawaida. Asante sana kutunin. Timothy Kori says, They are the ones misunderstanding us. True. <laughs> Maybe they're the ones misunderstanding every other generation. Or oh, are you saying Gen Z don't misunderstand other generations? Uh, Jadon Sancho says, Sancho here from Ongata Rungai. Gen Z isn't being understood. Their own formula of stubbornness is the only thing that makes them feel misunderstood. Interesting point there. Mm -hmm. We will come back to that. Mm -hmm. General Stinger Wakinambo says, A Karen Kameshika Mbaya Sana, Asanti Sana Kutu Watch. We have Victor Kitito says, Confused, Lazy, Thieves, ETC. Oh my wow. God. <laughs> Who are these Gen Z's you met? Why are you <laughs> so <laughs> harsh? You know, <laughs> why? 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 Who okay. sent you? <laughs> Who sent you? Uh, okay, um, we have Maurice Jacob Bakoha who says, Watching from Na Namushia Kabras, Asanti sana trevor last he says locked in from kikuyu thank you so much mm -hmm. so based on our comments i think even from the, the first one i read they're the ones misunderstanding us mm. they probably mean we are the ones misunderstanding the other generations mm -hmm. and someone has talked about the gen z's being stubborn so clearly there's there's some strong feelings mm. <laughs> against mm. gen <Strong>. z's <laughs> yeah and we have admitted that we have some stubbornness yes. within ourselves mm -hmm. But now when we get to that, especially when we get to the, the 9 to 5 and then breaking away and wanting to even get away from the country, because Gen Z's talk about it like it's something that can happen tomorrow. It's like tomorrow I'll be in the USA and you won't find me here. Mm -hmm. But then other generations see it as something long term. Like it's more of a dream for them. And for mm -hmm. us, we see some of these things as they're close to our reality. So how do you think maybe our nature has made us maybe desire more why do you think that is and how do you think that can translate into real life for someone who wants to break away from their nine to five, but they just don't know how to? First of all, I want to start from back there, back there. I feel like the older generation has a lot of responsibility, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. unlike us. They have a lot of responsibility. They have kids, they have bills, they have, you know, they have something to pay for. So they do not think that whatever they are earning, because most of them are doing an eight to five. Very few of them broke out of their system and started doing, you know, what we are doing right now. Yeah. So basically, I feel like they have a lot of responsibility. Hence, the dream of leaving the country is not so close. Yeah. It's not so, you know, doable. Yeah. Yet, when you come to look at us, you know, Gen Z's, as we've said, we are smarter, we work things fast, we look for easier ways to do things. That is why I feel like us leaving the country and breaking out from this system becomes easier for us. First of all, we don't have responsibilities. Not a lot of us, are, uh, not a lot of us have yeah. kids already. And a lot of us also don't want to have kids. 
from what is I've seen. That, yeah. That's true. Meaning, mm. w if I want to do something, I want to do it for myself, you know? Mm. I'm doing it for myself. Mm. And, and I'm not, I'm, I, like, it, it, it will be very easy for me to travel out the country. You know, I want to leave this job. Okay, but I have saved up rent. So yeah. I can start with the money that I got from like a year back. I can start my podcast. Mm. And I feel like for you to, to, to be able to do that, you need to be smart and you need to be very um, strategic. strategic. That's you have true. to be very strategic about it because That's anyway, true. you're going to leave your job and you have no rent for next month. Yeah. So, you know, you have, as, as she said, it's called what? Arrested Arrest development. Arrest and yes. Yeah. Uh, you, you just stay there, you vomilia because you know what is going to come after. Yeah. yeah. Mm. And to some extent, I'd say, I'd resonate with what you were saying. Mm. Most people are stuck in their nine to five. Mm. Most people are stuck in their responsibilities that they only see their responsibilities. Mm -hmm. They can't mm. shift their attention to something else yes. mm. because they're used to that routine. But then us as Gen Z's, we're not, we don't like routine. Most Gen Z's do not like that rigid routine over. Yes. I'll go to work true. in the morning, mm. come back in the evening, I'm cooking dinner, tomorrow we do it again, I'm only free on Saturday and Sunday. Mm. Most Gen Z's do not like that. And that can be considered stubbornness. That mm. can be considered you being hard-headed because mm. you do not want to conform. Mm. And most Gen Z's are like that. They do mm. not want to conform. So why don't the older generation see the possibility of, I can fly out with my kids, I can get a green card for the family and we can all take off they're like no because of my children i have to sacrifice this yeah. i have to sacrifice that why do we see things different from the way older generations see them why do you think that is because we have access to information mm. because we've seen the realities of what could possibly happen because um i feel like a while ago um going for the green card would, would actually sound like a very tasking thing like oh my god how am i even going to start mm. right now you go on tiktok this is how you get a green card you yeah. know, like it's so <laughs> you just easy. Do this. <laughs> yeah, you just All do this, over. this, yeah. this, and this, and you do that. And possibilities are by virtue of you having the information, you have a step further. You have, oh, whoa, what did I just say? <laughs> step further. You have a step further for you to actually make your dreams come true. The yeah. second thing, I feel like Gen Zs, we don't see we don't see the hurdles we see how good can it actually Get. be yeah. Yeah. yeah you know yeah. we see the positivity we see you know what it's I possible could, i could just go apply for this game card and i could go and how cute and I would I be? I know. I know. I know. Let me tell you guys. That has brought me to my next point. Yeah. We have this common popular phrase. Mm. The Lulu is, is the so Lulu. Yes. <laughs> you know, it's just trying to... Yeah, at, at, at work, I was, I was trying to explain that to a millennial. And they were asking, what is delusion? Mm. And you're telling them, just manifesting. You know, just visualize <laughs> your life. <laughs> vision <laughs> board. Check Do a vision board. And paste them somewhere no, and look at them board. every day. <laughs> 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 and you know, translating that to someone of, a, of an older generation is kind of crazy. Because they're like, if you want a car, work for it. Yeah. Do some research. Yeah. Start from that second hand and then build yourself up. And we're like, no, me, I want a G-Wagon. Exactly. I don't like, care. And, and it's I'm going to get a G-Wagon. I'm going to say, basically, I, oh, the, 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 first, the first car, the problem with me is that the first car I want is a Panamera. Like, I'm, I'm from walking to a Panamera. That's crazy. That's <laughs> really crazy. It's crazy. <laughs> but do you actually think the Lulu is the Solulu? Have you actually seen that phrase working in your life for real? Or is it just a phrase that we toss around? Generally, I do. Yeah. I generally do. Because, first of all, it's just like faking it is making it, you know? When, when, you, are, you, when you think about it, what you think comes to life, mm -hmm. basically. Because mm. when you are sad, everything around you will start going haywire. Yeah. But when you're happy, all, you'll just find th re reasons to be happy continuously, continuously. Mm. It's basically a pattern and an energy that you create for yourself. Mm -hmm. And I know I sound like a mad woman to older people right now, but trust me on this. <laughs> do it, do it. Just yeah. do it. Just be delusional a little bit. And you see on that note, because most, most of us, most of the Gen Zs, are, they have an understanding of energies, frequencies. Mm. They'll tell you just, Increase your frequencies. Yeah. The vibrations <laughs> around yeah, you. And you're yeah. wondering what's going on. Is this a witch? Is this a witch? Have we crossed over to the other side? <laughs> and because of our understanding of like maybe energy and how the way you talked about it, yeah, yeah. your mind creates your reality. Yeah. We truly, truly believe that. Most of the Gen Z's will say, I don't care. Yeah. I'm visualizing it. I've made a mood board. I'm just going to start it every day and then yeah. it's going to work. Yeah. But in addition to that, do we actually have to put in the work? Because you talked about putting in the work mm. to get away. So how do we add delusion 
with like smart work and figure out a way to integrate the two so that our dreams become a reality. Yeah, so that aspect of faith and frequencies and all of that, I just summarize it as, you know what, um, my faith will get me there. That's the first yeah. thing. The second thing would be uh, the aspect about hard work that you are talking about. It's, you know what, I'm not suffering. I'm just putting in the work for me to get on the plane. Yeah. Yeah. You know what, I'm not, I'm not out here waking up at 4 a.m. for nothing. I you know, know I like know. because when people see the aspect of hard work, they see the the difficulty of it. I'm seeing the process of getting there. Mm. Yeah. Yes, that's mm. what I said. The difference between um our generation and the older generation is that we see positivity in everything. Yeah. Yeah. And that's the reason why we have a mood board. Mm. You wake up, you see the mood board, and you and you, you are ready to go to work. Yes. So because like you can see yourself in the beginning. Yes. yes. You know, mm. it's like yes. the thing that wakes me up in, in the, the morning. morning. Yeah. Just yeah. gets me to the matatu. That, that one car. <laughs> noisy and smelly. Yeah. 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 So it's just about, it's basically like planning your life. Yes. Mm. But the way we approach it is different from maybe older generations because they'd probably write a list and then have yeah. their resolutions yeah. and then try to see. But then as you do that, you can forget through mm. the months. But having a vision board helps you really look at it and focus yeah. on it. I feel like we do it in a cuter way. Yeah. <laughs> we just do life in a cuter way. That's yeah. Yeah. period. Yeah. It's the same thing, but, but different. But like we are, we are but better. better. <laughs> <laughs> We're better. Yeah. Now let's talk about soft life. Ooh. Because Gen Z's Ooh. love a soft life. Like everyone's yeah. talking about, me, I want, I don't want to struggle. I don't want to hustle. Yeah. It's not giving. It's not giving. It's not giving. <laughs> <laughs> and it's always tied to our mental health, mm. which we are bigger on than millennials baby boomers yeah these people were thugging it out like you'll go through it and you have to make it at the yeah. end of the day but these these people are like no 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 for my mental health for my sanity yeah let me chill do we think that at least being given that maybe the information plus the encouragement to talk about our mental issues and understand what some of these things we're dealing with are have helped us prioritize our mental health. Yeah, I do. Mm. I genuinely do believe that we, 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 we are the ones talking about it, really. I don't think mm. that people, I feel like we started being vocal about it, then they had to accept mm -hmm. the fact that we are going through it and they have yeah. to talk about it no matter what. Mm. Because I feel like the rates of suicide uh, have gone down since we started talking about mental yeah. health. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I hear KNH had um, free therapy for people mm. and people started going, which is yeah. amazing. Mm. Because I genuinely feel when, when we close ourselves off, we thug it out. It's, it only affects us, yeah? That's true. And it affects our generation to come. Because if yeah. I'm angry, my child is going to be angry because mm. the mother is angry. You're yes. projecting You're projecting. Them. And you're going to yeah. be tolerating trauma. You're going to, to be raising up people who are traumatized. They're going to traumatize their kids, exactly. which we decide to defy, you know? Exactly. We decide to defy. And we, yeah. we, choose, we choose to just approach these things in a softer way, in yeah. a better way, and we encourage people to talk about it. Hence, why we prefer the soft life, because ain't no way I'm going to come to work and you're yelling at me. So, yeah. bye. <laughs> bye. Get somebody else. Get somebody else to do it. I'm out of here. Yeah, the door. And you think, uh, you'd think that something like that will maybe rub off on the older generations, that probably some of them are more accommodating and accepting over just mental health awareness and these conversations. And some of them are difficult, even sharing with your parents. Because mm. you can tell your parents, I have anxiety, and they're like, what do you what mean? That? Uh, what, yeah, what we rebuke that? that in the name of Jesus. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> <laughs> you know? And it's something so basic oh for God. us. <laughs> <laughs> and I it's something so basic amazing. for us yes. oh that God. our parents didn't get that opportunity to even just deal with it. Because they had to thug it out. Mm. They had to you know, work their way through it. Mm. How do we break that trauma? Because we've been raised by parents who were tough. Yes. Like most of our African parents were like, oh wewe, amka, wezi lala kwa inyumbati uko na mental health, you just struggles, iso ni gini sasa, and a job. Mm. And we'd see them doing it, they'd work through it. How do we break that trauma? How do we, maybe, because the way we talked about projection, mm. some of the parents projected, your frustration, your job, I'm a I'm a I'm a frustrated, na sijui nani, ni wewe, wendo umelete, wezo mavitu zote unashautiwa. How do we heal and break away from that so that we do not pass on that trauma to our kids? Mm. I think it's putting a name 
to the mm. emotion or to the feeling. That that feeling of you, the chest when you you feel concocted and you feel like there's like a kawaru here. Yeah. You know what that is? That might be anxiety. Yeah. That might that yeah. feeling that you feel like you don't want to wake up mm. in the morning. That's probably depression. Mm. Yeah. You know um, that feeling where you feel like everything is just falling off the ground and you don't know what to do. Mm. Yeah, put names in every single emotion. Yeah. And when you yeah. put the names, you can be able to know, what do I need to do? Mm. Do I need to take a day off? You know, do I need to just um, take a walk outside? It can be yeah. that simple. Okay. Do I need to yeah. talk to someone? Mm. Do I need to actually seek professional help? Mm. Because when you understand the root cause, when you start putting names to your emotions, that's where you begin to start breaking the traumas that are there. Mm. Yeah. yeah. That's true. Because putting a name to the emotion because most times you just feel like why can't i breathe and you don't understand that you're mm. only having a panic yeah. attack yes. and you need to actually address that get a way to deal with it yeah. mm. now on that note kuna watu wanasema janzia wajelewi cuz today you're CG, you you want to become a banker oh. tomorrow you're like i want to become a pilot <laughs> or or even the way we're talking about just our emotions yeah. today i'm happy tomorrow i'm sad yeah. and we are more willing to accommodate all these changes in emotions and we're yeah. willing to to become more accepting and being like i take it mm. i accept it today for what it is mm -hmm. so what what would you say about that what would you say do you think how to jlewi or are we just exploring and trying to understand who we are i generally feel like these people feel like we should have our lives figured out the way they did which they didn't they didn't if you think about it yeah, yeah. because most of them settled they settled. They were told, go study, be a nurse. They yeah. went to study, be a nurse. Go study, be a teacher. And you find these people beating kids almost to death. Yeah. Because, because they, they are not happy. Mm -hmm. And when we as Gen Zs decide, okay, let me try this. I don't like it. Let me try this. I don't like it. Let me try this. Okay, I like this. Yeah. You know, they call us confused. That's not confusion. You just need to check yourself out. You are projecting. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Mm. You so need maybe to go check yourself out. Yes. Jealous. <laughs> Thank you. I didn't want to say Are you guys so jealous of us? <laughs> no, I didn't say it, but I agree. But I agree. I really do. Yeah. True. Because the way we're talking about it, most times it's just a projection. Mm. Of, mm. I didn't have the same opportunities to that try. You had. Exactly. So how, how are you living your best life like this and you're so young? That's why you're confused. That's why you're confused. You're confused. Go and find yourself. And you're <laughs> actually in the process of finding yourself. <laughs> yeah. And most of us, you get to your 20s and you realize you are a teenager and now you're an adult and it just doesn't feel like you're an adult because mm. you need to seek advice from an adult oh, your yeah. adult exactly. <laughs> and <laughs> d we are more we are more willing to ask for help mm. and seek for advice mm -hmm. and want to learn more True. Is that something that is different because of the times that we're in? Or is it because our parents encouraged us? Why do you think we're more willing to seek help? Go to therapy and actually listen to someone and tell them about our issues. Well, because we've learned how to embrace, quote unquote, embrace the suck. You know, we're not the best. I'm not the best out here. Yeah. I'm just trying to go through life. Mm. Listen, I think of myself uh, this way. I'm not special, but I'm God's favorite. Because yeah. I'm not special, Period, yeah. I can do it anything and possibly succeed yeah because i'm not special i can go out there try break dancing and this could actually work i can go out there use this degree of mine to talk to talk on some on something on content creation and somebody from i don't know latvia or somebody from um the us will see me and be like you know what we'd like to work with you yeah. you know because yeah. i'm not special this yeah. could happen to anyone yeah yeah, yeah. i like that yeah. mm. and the Very internet nice. truly yeah. has yes. given us the information it has empowered us mm. it has made us feel like especially that thing of uh, you sharing an experience and you find five twenty a thousand fifty thousand other people who relate to that mm -hmm. it's given us a source of a, a sense of comfort mm. we're like okay so i'm actually not the only one i'm not mm. weird True. there are people who relate to what i'm experiencing mm -hmm. and that's something that maybe older generations did not experience that mm. so now we are I think we were the first generation to actually truly, truly experience the digital era. Yeah. Because yes. it came up when we were getting to like maybe being teenagers yeah. and we were still like yeah. young mm. and we really got immersed into yeah. this whole space. Mm. And how do you think technology has really helped us? How do you think it's really added value? Because now it's given us opportunities, mm. it's giving us mm. therapy. Mm. What else do you think it's doing that we can even exploit? I, I feel like apart from opportunities and, and it's basically giving therapy, it, it, it helps you feel like you're not alone. It helps you not feel like you're alone because when you see someone else going through the same thing, 
you're comforted you know you're yeah. like okay actually this is not an original experience and someone mm. else has gone through it and they have come out of it yeah. well and alive so that it, I feel like it, um, um, it has also given Gen Z's a place of expression. I don't yeah. feel like other generations had that. I don't feel like it, it, uh, the, the other generations had a space where they can come say what I think and period, I'm done, bye, mic drop, you know. Mm. So I also feel it gave us a place of expression and a, a place to say what we think and, you know, relate to each other, which is yeah. actually a really good thing. Mm. It's like a safe space. Right? It is a safe mm. space. Where you find people like influencers mm. or creators or even friends that you yeah. can relate with yeah. and you want to just bond. Yeah. Mm. Mm. On that note, the counter effect of that Ooh. is Oof. Gen Z's <laughs> are regarded as addicts. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Have you ever realized you can yes. go to Instagram, go to TikTok, go to Twitter, and then come back to Instagram? It's just like you just sleep on TikTok, though. The cycle, you know. Yeah, the, the, the language is waiting for TikTok, though. You know. Yeah. <laughs> it's just a cycle. Yeah. Because sometimes I've caught myself doing that. Mm. I go, uh, I leave Instagram, and then the next thing I'm tapping is Instagram. I'm yeah. Like, oh my god. Am I'm I just addicted? from here, though. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, do you think we are addicted, Rachel? And how can we break away or take breaks? Because there are people who literally hinge on the opinions mm. of people on the internet. Mm. They can't do yeah. anything without yeah. that. Mm. Let's start with the internet is fun. You know, you can just go on TikTok and then you see someone wearing like a giant, like a giant suit, and they're like, "It's been a bad, a jolly time," you know, like, yeah. <laughs> and that will give you joy. And when yeah. you when you get those constant um, impulses of adop of dopamine, you know, it actually gets to you, and you want to get that over and over again. But realize that the internet is like a small town somewhere, so you kind of have to plug off. And if you want to do it in a more productive way, this is what I usually say: Could you do something else as you're TikToking? Could mm. you could you be sugwa in those masufuria? You know, una sugwa yeah. masufuria apo kama yeah. when you're listening to your to your favorite TikTok person talking to you about whatever it is that they're talking yeah. you, talking to you about. Yeah. And the second thing would be um, with the you have to recognize that your attention span is slowly becoming shorter and shorter. This is That's something true. you have to actually catch yourself and realize. Listen, I'm giving myself one hour. Put an alarm if you have to. One hour. And that's it. Yeah. If you find yourself, um, the phones have evolved. You can find a way where after an hour it blocks itself or it gives you a notification and you can yeah. catch yourself. Mm. Yeah, that's actually pretty practical into getting to a point where you can actually log off. Mm. And find the balance. Yes. So many people struggle with that. And so they, used to, they use social media to cope. Yeah. You know, you know mm. I'm, I'm sad. Why? TikTok. Kwanza, let's Crazy. let's tie that. Let's mm. tie your comment with Mama Kupate Apple. Uko, uko Instagram but unapika. <laughs> Ukwabu na watch kitu Netflix and you cooking. How do we explain to them that eh? Mani meongo, meongo. How can we make them understand that I'm still very much present? I'm doing what I'm doing, but I'm entertaining myself to do other Yeah, I don't feel like they understand it. Yeah, but they have to. That's what I do. <laughs> like for real though, like um, I, I feel like they, they need to understand that social media is not that bad. Yeah. yeah, it could bring some good because that is the root of why they keep on telling you, Oh, <laughs> your, your stomach is aching, it's that <laughs> phone, <laughs> it, it must be that phone. Mm. You know, I, I, I feel like they need to understand that social media is not that bad. Yes, at some point it has its perks, you know, the, the other side, the, neg the negative side, but then again, they need to understand that it could bring you some good. Yeah. And a lot of good for that matter for a content creator, you know. That's yeah. True. So I feel like that is where they need to tune their mm. minds, you know. Try yeah. to make them feel like, mm. yeah, and teach them about it, you know. Mm. You, you tell them, you know, social media can do this. Oh, mom, you know, you can get a job via here. You know, you can. So they understand why you are there on so much. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. You know, I, I like that because... And yeah, well, there's so many good things that come from social media. Yeah. So you can learn. You can be there watching a, a piece of video of someone maybe creating an app or even coding or something that educates you yes. as well as doing what you're doing. Yeah. Mm. How do we make them understand that? Particularly now, to wrap up the conversation, mm -hmm. Rachel, mm -hmm. I'm in the 9 to 5 corporate lifestyle and I want my millennial or my baby boomer box to understand that this is who I am. I'm still productive, but this is my nature. How do you translate who you are to the older generation? Uh, I'll start with number one, authentic authenticity. And this doesn't mean um, cosplaying into what it is that they want to see. No, this just means that... Um, 
in an informal way kuficha white like tokea when you want to talk if you need to if you want if you're supposed to write an email don't write hey y'all how you doing is the <laughs> no no that's not going to fly at all be professional because at the end of the day what is the setting that you're in when you clock out, you can do the, the tiki toki and the Instagram and the funny things outside. But especially in professional settings, like in the banking sector, if you're a lawyer, if you're a doctor and all of these things, imagine going to the hospital and the doctor be like, okay, bye. He just yeah. left, you know? Mm. You know, <laughs> that's a wrap. understand the setting that you're in. <laughs> yeah. Because like I said, if you want the, the game plan to be a good time, not a long time, stick it out for the long time. Feature mm. white. Because yeah. at the end of the day, this is your career that you're building, yeah. you know? And there's a little bit of formality that has to be there. But at the same time, also have a sense of humor. Like, don't be boring. You know? <laughs> like the bosses. That is to the bosses. Like, yeah. take a joke. But if you realize, <laughs> the more authentic you come out, the yeah. more you crack that joke during lunch. During lunch time, please. Not yeah. during the board meeting. Yeah. During yeah. lunch time. Belly, I see you crack jokes. So like... <laughs> You know, mm, do we need to revoke the contract? Oh, <laughs> oh my god, <laughs> when you do it in the settings that are allowed, they actually do translate that when yeah. you, they do translate that to the office because mm. sometimes you can say something over lunch and then you hear them saying it to another colleague somewhere, like, Oh, you, you stole that from me, yeah. could you tra trademark that, please? <laughs> you know, <laughs> <laughs> quote me, yeah. copyright it, yes, <laughs> you, know? you know, you cannot outdo the doer. <laughs> <laughs> yes. And now, when, you, when we toss that yeah. over to Natasha, yeah. because you said that you were unable to cope with the nine to five. Oh my god, yeah. But you found a way to put yourself out there, mm. build your own career and do your own thing. So how would you encourage someone who wants to be that way? If they want to be a creator, if they want to do farming and they just maybe they're afraid yeah. of breaking away or they don't know how to start. What advice would you give them? Do it scared. Mm. Do it scared because the moment you're just comfortable, you're doing nothing, honey. Yeah. Mm. You are doing nothing. Mm. The moment you when you see change, that's when you know anyway this is moving. This is mm. this is something. You know, when when and when it gets harder and harder, don't give up. You know, if you are you need you can't run, walk. If you can't walk, crawl. Yeah. You Just must do, do it. it. Because if you want it that bad, trust me you'll do it. Yes. You know? Yeah. It's, that's it's true. the same as if, if if he wants to, he will. If you want to, you will. Yes. That's <laughs> just it. I mm. like yeah. that. Yeah. Mm. That's such a beautiful way to wrap up this conversation. I hope we have given you some insight on who the Gen Z's are and why Gen Z's are the way they are. So it's just a matter of really getting to know the individual you're with. And as a Gen Z, don't be fixated on Mimi Niko too heavy. Try to adapt, try to understand the other generation as well so that we can all coexist in a way that makes sense and we're all happy. And I think that's it for our conversation today. It's been so lovely. I've taken something away from this and I hope you have as well. We will have a repeat of this tomorrow between 1 and 2 p.m. And it's going to be up on all social media platforms as well on YouTube at Y254. So stay tuned to the channel. We have more amazing content coming your way. And next week at the same time, same place, we're going to be having yet another interesting conversation. So stay tuned to catch that. And I hope you have a lovely evening.